Hello, Chris Sexton with Team Icon here. In this video we are going to be talking about programming a Castle ESC for use with the Icon Governor. We're going to take a peek at the default Castle settings, uh, talk about the difference between external Governor mode and multi-rotor mode and the pros and cons for both. I'm going to walk you through the basic information you will need to know about not only your setup but your motor to make the Castle ESC and the Icon Governor as efficient as possible. So let's get to it. To start with, obviously you're going to have to have your Castle ESC. For the purposes of this video we're using a Castle ICE2 120. You're also going to need the Castle Link Programmer. If you do not have one of these, your Castle ESC should have come with a coupon to get one from Castle. Highly recommend you do that. And then of course, as you can see on the screen, you're going to need the Castle Link software. Uh, this software is downloadable at castlecreations.com. Uh, when you launch the software, it will automatically check to make sure it has the newest version of the, of the CastleLink software, which is nice. Um, it will also check the firmware on the ESC when you fire it up to make sure you get running the newest there. So I'm going to pause the camera there, get things situated, and we'll be right back. Okay, here we go. I now have my Castle ESC plugged into the CastleLink. The ESC is powered with a flight pack, but the motor is not connected to the helicopter at this time. We're not actually programming the governor in this step, so I don't need a motor to spin. So I'm actually setting this up on the bench away from the helicopter, which is much easier to manipulate. As you can see, as soon as you power up the castle, you're going you're gonna to have two green checkboxes down here. One is for the USB connection is actually linked with the Castle Link, and the second one is the device is online. When you plug in the device, it should automatically recognize the series. In this case, Phoenix Ice High Volt, and this is an Ice 2. The screen doesn't say that. This is the default screen. Across the top here, you've got the different tabs for the different sections of the setup. You've got the About, which tells us what unit is installed. Throttle page, this is where we're going to set our type of throttle response. Brake. This section will be grayed out in helicopter mode. There's no reason you would ever want to run a brake with a helicopter motor. Uh, brake more applies more to the trucks and the cars where the, the engines actually, the vehicles, brakes as well. Cutoffs, we'll talk about that. This is where you're going to set your low volt cutoffs, the cutoff type. Um, basically how you want the, the ESC to react should your batteries drop um, below voltage or if you should have a current spike too high. Motor, this tab is going to talk about the timing and the direction of rotation as well as the P PWM rate for each motor. We'll talk about that in a moment. Other, this tab, depending on the model of, of speed control you have, has different information. With the ICE 2, basically this allows you to choose to turn the on off, power on, beep on or off. On an edge ESC, over here you've got some options for what to do with the new auxiliary wire. You can set that for RPM out, you can set that for external gain adjustment, all kinds of fun things. But since this is an ICE 2, we don't have that functionality here. Logging, this is a really cool feature of the castles, probably hands down my favorite feature of the castle. The castle actually has a built-in logging and will actually keep track of your battery voltage, battery ripple on the main pack, battery current, controller temperature measured off the internal board, controller input throttle meaning what throttle input it's seeing it's being requested, controller motor power output how much of the available power it's actually putting out and the actual RPM of the motor. Lots of great information. Um, the logging durations and sample frequencies basically the higher the sample frequency the shorter the record time it has. As you can see at 1 Hertz which is one sample per second it can actually keep a little over an hour of information on there. At two samples per second, you cut down to about half. Five samples per second, you're at 13 minutes. And at 10 samples per second, you're at six, a little under seven minutes. I actually leave mine normally right at two samples per second. I think that's plenty of information. And I'm in my speed controllers pretty often checking the logs, so I don't have a trouble running out of 34 minutes of data. One note on the logger while we're here. It is a good idea to download your log data and clear your log data often. Um, the buffer on there only holds so much and if it runs out, 
and you have a crash and you go to pull your log, you may find that you ran out of buffer space and don't have the data from your most recent flight. So uh, I try to clear my logs fairly often. Software, this page is actually telling us what versions of the firmware are out. As you can see, this speed controller is running version 3.27. There are several new versions out. Uh, 4.12 beta is the newest version, and that is the version we're going to run. I have not updated this unit yet because I wanted you to see how it's done. I know this isn't really relative to the icon, but this is the kind of stuff you want to start with. We're going to select 4.12 and select the Update Firmware button. As you can see, it's going to run through real quick. It's a two-part process. It starts by wiping the PROM, and then it's going to write the new ROM. Make sure you do not power down or disconnect the controller at any time during this process, or it could cause you trouble. Step two is now actually writing the new information to the PROM, to the ROM, excuse me, and it will give us an OK box when it's finished. Now that it's done, the speed controller software resets. Now you can see if I go back to software, my current version is 4.12 beta. If for some reason the, you upgrade a firmware on a castle and you're having troubles, it is very easy to step back. You can simply select anything on this list and roll back. So if any of these changes for the 4.12 beta cause you trouble, then you can always just roll it right back to the previous version and away you go. So I'm going to go ahead and um, jump back to the throttle page and uh, get some things situated on my end. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, as you can see, I have resituated things onto the throttle page. I'm going to try to adjust the zoom here so you can see everything. Basically, this page is the meat and potatoes of the setup. On this page is where you tell it what kind of vehicle it is. And again, as soon as you select helicopter, everything on the brake page goes away. The type of throttle, uh, in our case, we are going to we want to run, um, we're going to change that in a moment, internal governor or fixed endpoints, and then the throttle response. Um, this information, depending upon what model you choose, some of these options will become available and some won't. For the case of the icon, when you're running the icon governor, you actually want to tell it uh, one of two things. Um, external governor is the obvious choice. In the external governor mode, the speed controller does have a soft start, so when you initially flip off throttle hold, you have a slow ramp up. Uh, in external governor mode, though, once it's past the, the ramp up speed, it responds to the speed, the icon governor's inputs quickly, and that the speed of that change is set here with a sped with the speed change rate. The positive to govern, external governor mode is you do not have to rely on the icon for bailout. You do not have to rely on the icon for soft start. You can still run, if configured properly, the speed controller auto rotation bailout. Um, this is particularly helpful. Let's say, since the icon gives you three flight modes, let's say you want to have a flight mode that does not run governor. You just want to have the ability to spool up, you want to adjust your throttle curves, you want to play with low head speeds, whatever you want to do. When the governor is not engaged, the soft start in the icon doesn't work. So if you were to have a flight mode with no governor and try to spool up without a soft start in the speed controller, you're just going to spin on the ground and potentially cause some problems. So the external gov mode does give you that soft start. Um, and again, the speed rate of the soft start on the castle is adjusted right here on initial spool up rate. The cons to this, if you are going to use the ICON bailout system, which I strongly recommend you simplify things, I don't personally like having two different devices fighting over control. If you're trying to use the ICON bailout, you cannot use external governor. There's no way to turn off the soft start with external governor mode, and every time, even though the ICON sees bailout request, it idles the speed controller. As soon as the castle sees that zero throttle, it assumes you've landed. And doesn't matter how quickly the icon requests the head speed to come back, it's going to spool up slowly. So it completely negates the, the bailout. To make bailout work with icon, I strongly suggest you go to multi-rotor. 
Now, in multi-rotor mode, as you can see, everything's grayed out. There's no soft start, there's no, there's no built-in bailout, there's no adjustment for change rate. It is a true one-to-one -one in, one-to-one -one out. When the speed controller asks for 30%, it gets 30% on the spot. If the speed controller asks for 100%, it gets 100% on the spot. It's a really fast refresh rate. Pros for that. Gives the icon total control of the, of the RPM government governing. Excuse me. The icon soft starts in, in play. The icon bailout can work properly. The icon response to head speed changes can work properly. It's just a very simplistic. It negates the speed controller's ability to do any of that. Cons. We just talked about that normal mode where you might want to play without the governor. If you try to spool up in that normal no governor, you better have a linear curve in your throttle curve so you can bring the RPMs up slowly and fake the soft start yourself. Otherwise, you're just going to snap to 100% or snap to 60%, spin on the deck, it could cause tip overs, it could cause damage, destroy your tail fin, all kinds of fun stuff. So that is a con to multi-rotor. If you're going to run multi-rotor, I do not recommend having a non-gov spool-up bank in your icon. But again, the pros, in my opinion, dramatically outweigh the cons. All of my icons are now set up in multi-rotor. Um, you can use linear curves. The icon does not actually engage the governor itself until you're over 50% um, of the throttle request. So you can have that 0 to 25 slow ramp up if you want um, but if the icon makes a request for throttle speed controller answers there's no question that also makes it very easy to tune when you're trying to figure out why the head speed change isn't right why the bailout isn't fast enough why it spools up so fast if you only have one appliance to worry about all those features it's just much easier. You can focus on programming the icon and not worry about the speed controller. So this is where we're going to leave it. Multi-rotor fixed endpoint mode. Now with the Castle ESCs it's very important and this might be hard for you to see. After you make any changes you have to press the update button. It's not really saved until you press update. Now we have successfully told the speed controller we want to do multi-rotor mode with fixed endpoints. So we are now giving the icon complete control of this unit. But there's still some information we have to tell the speed controller. First and foremost, cutoffs. A lot of this is subjective. I'm going to tell you where I put it. First and foremost, voltage cutoff, I always put the soft. Soft cutoff is going to, if the battery sags, is going to lower the RPM of the head. Basically effectively cuts the available voltage so that you, you'll still be able to fly, but you'll know something's up because it won't have the power it's supposed to. If you set this to hard cutoff, it's actually going to shut down the speed controller. You'll lose head speed like he hits throttle hold. I don't like that. Pulsing. Pulsing's probably okay on, on an airplane, but in a helicopter, that scares me because the head speed could pulse. You could strip torque tube gears. You could be doing a pyro flip and it pulse and go out of control. Um, it's not real handy. And then RPM reduction, this slowly brings the RPMs to zero. It's kind of like the hard cutoff, otherwise, other than it's just not an instant shutoff, it will slowly bring the RPMs down to zero. I like soft. Current limiting. This is where you tell the speed controller how sensitive to amp spikes you want to be. Now this is a 120 HV going to be run on a six cell system. It's very easy to get a six cell system to spike in the 160 range. It's just, it is. The Scorpion 4025 1100 kV motor is a stout little motor, and seeing amps over 160 is pretty common. I'm going to set this to insensitive. I know guys that put this to disabled, basically meaning it'll catch fire before it shuts down. I don't like doing that. I'd rather the speed controller shut down before it catches fire. Current cutoff type, again, um, soft cutoff talked about that. This is if the um, amp load exceeds that, it's going to do a soft and shut down gracefully rather than just flat out cutting the power. The auto lipo volts per cell. Basically what we have here is we've told the speed controller that it's a lipo battery and we're telling it that we don't want it to do anything so long as it sees 
voltage above 3.2 volts per cell. Adjusting this setting is going to adjust how low it will let the batteries go before it tells you you're sagging. I have found, particularly with batteries that are well broke in, under load, it's pretty easy to hit 3.2. Under load, rested, you're going to be over 3.7. Under load, spike to 3.2. So I like to set this to 3.0. Again, that's just a preference. Once you have everything on the castle on the cutoffs page set, you press update, and it remembers. Okay, the motor tab. This stuff is pretty straightforward. Um, you're going to have to know the specifications of your motor. Every motor is different. In my case, the Scorpion HK3 4025-1100. Um, the default medium start power is good. Motor timing of normal. I have not had any problems with this. You can play with timing if you want to try to get a little more power out of it. Watch your temperatures. Forward direction. Um, if you power it up, since it is a three-phase system, if you go to spin it and it's spinning backwards, there's two things you can do. You can un you know, swap any two of the three motor wires, or you can come in here and reverse the direction. I'm going to leave it on forward for now. PWN rate. This one has a lot of conversation. Even though these are outrunner motors, 99% of the time you're not going to want to use outrunner mode. You're going to want to know the specs and the requests of your motor. In my case, Scorpion likes 8 kilohertz, so we're going to set that. Again, remember to press update. Alright guys, there you go. We have now successfully programmed our Castle Ice 2 120 for use with the 6 cell 4025 11, uh, 1100kV motor on the Icon Governor. Uh, again, we used multi-rotor mode because I plan to set up the Icon Auto Bailout and I have no problems using the Icon Soft Start. Um, I hope this video was informative. I know I carried off onto some tangents that really aren't relative to the Icon, but I don't see the point in doing a video about the Castle ESC if I don't cover everything. Hope it helps.